we're, we're here with the Texas Hall of Famer, uh, Henry Thomas. Henry, um, man, it's, it's been such a whirlwind career for you. Um, being able to, to kind of do these retrospectives with like E.T., um, what do you feel like when you get to look back at after all these years, what are you looking for when you get to watch it in these type of experiences? I don't know if I even watch really it. watch it anymore. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of, uh, it's at the point for me now where it's, it's sort of nostalgia and part of my childhood. So uh, for a long time, I think I kind of shied away from doing anything that associated me with, uh, or reassociated me with <laughs> ET, you know? Uh, but it's a special film and it was a, a big successful film in a lot of people's lives. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it's nice to see that you know, almost 40 years later, people are still taken with the film and, and, and they want to see it. So it's kind of silly of me to go, oh, no, no. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be associated with that film anymore. Um, you know, I'll always be associated with that film. Exactly, yeah. I'm kind of curious, you know, the Diff's really loved you over the years. We've had uh, Legends of Hell Gates come through. Um, what's it like being able to, I mean, I know it's not San Antonio, but be home for this type of experience? Well, it definitely is, it feels like coming home because, uh, you know, I think the first few jobs in my career, uh, well, the second, the second one I, I filmed here in Dallas and Dallas was always a place that I would come to for castings and things like that because San Antonio, they, uh, you know, honestly, they they went there once uh, for Raggedy Man and then <laughs> picked me up and then I was kind of chasing uh, Liz Kegley and Sherry Rhodes around, you know, regional casting for a few months. Uh, and then I got the part in E.T. and things kind of opened up after that. When you made the jump to TV for the first time, what was that like for you? Because you've, you've stayed consistent. I mean, like most recently, I mean, there was, you know, even like Sons of Liberty and, yeah. and Betrayal. I mean. That's always kind of been a nice outlet for you. Well, the thing about TV is uh, it's accessible. It's good for actors because generally you make a little money, you have a short run, and you know your your TV show or your movie of the week or or miniseries or whatever it is um, gets airtime. A lot of people see it. Um, I've kind of struggled in and out of being kind of in the in the middle tier of actors as far as films go. You know, I can get small roles in big films, but I usually don't get cast uh, as a major uh, major role. The exceptions being like um, Gangs of New York or or. Uh, Legends of the Fall, Suicide Kings, Suicide Kings. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just TV is kind of uh, it's it's readily available, and what you see in my career is Russian roulette casting process, me auditioning, getting something, taking it. And it ending up on my resume, you know, I, I'm not, um, you know, I hope you you don't have any delusions of me sitting in some office kind of going, <laughs> no, not this one. <laughs> <sighs> this is beneath me, you know. I, I kind of take what I can get and uh, read for everything and, uh, you know, a lot of things. I missed out on a lot of things uh, just by not getting the the audition, not getting the part through the audition. So, mm. um, and then some things are offered me, you know, I still get offers sometimes, but this career uh, is, is very strange <laughs> and there's no uh, rhyme or reason to it, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm kind of curious when you've gotten to play then like, like, like real life characters like John Adams or something where you get to kind of dive into the history, Hank Williams. Yeah. What, what have those roles meant to you? Because those are some of the best roles you've done, I think. Oh, thank you, yeah. I, well, I love that because that gives you something that you can actually 
play. Mm. You know, you can play the character. And that's a lot more interesting to me as an actor than, uh, you know, being the supporting lead guy who's just, you know, I'd, I'd much rather have a f fully fleshed out character um, than try to find some business to make some boring guy interesting, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it makes your job easier, basically, if you're playing uh, Hank Williams or John Adams because you, people are expecting to see certain things, you know, and you can, you can show them those and still manage to steer it uh, in a way that's interesting for you as, a, as an artist. With the with the Hank Williams and uh, we've got like I saw the light just came out another yeah. Hank Williams, um, but also being a musician, um, that must have been just so much fun. That was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was just frustrating because, you know, we knew going into it that we didn't have the money we needed, we didn't have the budget, we didn't have the time, uh, and. Basically, we had to stop production for a couple of weeks because one of the financiers pulled out, and we had to find more money, start production up again, and uh, basically, the other actor that uh, that I shared most of my scenes with, uh, Jesse James, he and I had to uh, memorize everything and treat it sort of like a one-act play and shoot most of the interior of the car scenes uh, for the entire film in one day. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, we shot it all on a stage. Um, like the whole, you know, the whole yeah. process of driving and, and all of those scenes between us we, we shot in one day. And uh, it was great and we did it and we felt good about the work, but you're always working with your back against the wall, you know, against these constraints and it's always financial constraints um, so it's frustrating you mm -hmm. know especially when you know the studios are giving some like screwball comedy thing a 30 40 million dollar budget and you know we can't get five million to make a, a Hank Williams story you know that's pathetic is it tough then to like, where do you find the motivation to keep doing this? Because it's not like you've had, like, a vast break. You've always stayed consistent. Pretty consistent, yeah. I've had, you know, I've had years maybe where, you know, no work, like a year and a half, two years in between jobs. Um, and that's rough. That's, you know, that's tough on, on my family and me, you know, psychologically, it starts to do your head in after a while. You're just like, oh. You know, like any other, any other career, I'd have a gold watch and <laughs> retirement. You know, I'd be like collecting my pension now. But um, you know, it's back to the salt mines. <laughs> you know, um, in a lot of ways, you know, I'm still like, I'm I'm still the guy that's going into the office with a sheet of paper, saying, "Pick me, pick me." <laughs> um, despite everything that I've done, you know, it's, uh, it, it's frustrating sometimes because you feel like, you know, you're like Sisyphus pushing the, the big boulder up the hill and, um, for what? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, just as whenever I'm about to give up and, uh, I don't know, go into like a barbecue business or something on the side, I, uh, I get a job. And they send me away somewhere. Barbecue business. What is? I, is that I, a hint towards anything? No, I'm just <laughs> make, I'm making something up because I, uh, you know, I'm I'm good at barbecue. So I I always, whenever I have a barbecue, everyone always says, oh, "You should open your own restaurant." <laughs> and my friend's a chef. He says that's the worst thing. Like anybody who thinks like, "Oh, my food's good. I should open a restaurant." <laughs> that's you, you don't want to you don't want to start a business. With that guy. That's a bull choice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, as a Texan then, I mean, you're, it's funny because you've always been kind of painted as this, who is Henry, where is he from? But for <laughs> us, we've always known you as just a good old Texas boy. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird how outside the state you don't have that. 
that no, flavor. No, no. Well, I mean, it used to be. I think I used to have like a, you know, a, a little shroud of uh, exclusivity around me because I didn't live in L.A. I lived in, you know, outside of San Antonio somewhere. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm sure it was... Uh, it sounded much more romantic than it actually was, you know, but um, but when I moved to L.A., I thought, I'm going to move out here, I'm going to live here for five years, I'm going to get as much work as I can, and then, you know, hopefully have made enough money that I can go buy a place anywhere I want and, you know, get some land. And that was 15 years ago. <laughs> I think I had more money then than I have now, and uh, no, no big place, <laughs> no <laughs> land, and uh, yeah. So LA is kind of a, a, an elusive, uh, an elusive thing. Do you think it's taken the Texan out of you in any chance? No, I, I don't feel any different. I mean, I've, I've always felt like a, a, a bit of a an oddball anyway, like I, I didn't, I didn't really feel like I, I belonged anywhere. So, um, so, you know, I'm like a rolling stone, I guess. I've, I've moved around too much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of curious, what is, what do you like then when you go to films or, you know, plays? I mean, what do you search out for? I just like to see, uh, I like to see honest moments. I like to see people really, you know, invested in what they're doing. And sometimes the material is important, sometimes it's not. Like, mm. I, I, I enjoy watching performances. But, you know, when I watch something, it's just like anybody else watching something. I mean, I just want to be entertained. And, uh, and you know, Quite frankly, like sometimes it's too much for me to watch uh, a big dramatic uh, film or an interesting film. Um, I do like popcorn movies, and I like uh, you know explosions and aliens and flying saucers, and all that. <laughs> death rays. So I've got to ask then, like when you. When you get to meet other young actors who are coming up in the industry, what, how do you interact with them? Do they approach you in a certain way? Do you give them advice or do you just kind of let them go with it and see what happens? Usually I just kind of, you know, I don't want to be this guy. That, you know, well, kid, <laughs> you know, listen to me. Let me give you a few tips, kid. No, I, I'm not that person, but... But you do see some, you know, some young actors, like, I'll, I'll see them and they'll be watching me and they'll want to say something or, or something. And usually if I, if I see that and I notice it, I'll, um, I'll give them an in or, or start talking to them about it a little bit. But, you know, the truth is that, you know, I feel bad because I don't, I don't think I really have any good advice for <laughs> for these guys. You know, I'm still trying to figure it out myself, um, and it's been like a lifelong process, and it'll probably I'll probably still not figure it out. Um, but that's the nature of the beast, a little bit. Uh, I think the best thing you can do, trying to have a career in this industry, is just keep trying. You know. Um, and don't let it do your head in mm. while you're uh, while you're pursuing it. Just you didn't you you don't like those big dramatic movies, but like your TV roles have recently been pretty dramatic. Like which are those just like serious materials. I like to I like to when I'm when I'm acting, I like to do serious stuff. I mm. like to do really dramatic stuff. That's fun. Um, is that because it's so different than you? I mean, or is that? Yeah, and it's a little heightened. It's a little, um, it's like a heightened reality. You know, it's a fine line between melodrama and, you know, doing too much and, and not enough. So, 
that's fun for me as an actor because I like to play with those. Um, I, I like to play with those moments, you know, because it's interesting to me when people lose it, when people fly off the handle, or when they don't, or maybe they should, but they don't. Mm. Uh, those those kind of beats are, are are very exciting as an actor because you can you can play with the dynamic of the scene so much. Um, of course, now everybody's asleep now that I started talking about acting. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess to kind of end things now that we're, we're it's, it's going to be such an uh, interesting, fun day. I mean, we're doing this out in the open at Clyde Warren Park. It's like there's this, so many things going on in the arts district. There's, it's not just a film event, it feels like, with what we're getting to showcase ET. What is that like for you being able to be a part of something Dallas-centric that is helping the city in a way? Well, it's fun, and it's it's great that I can actually be a part of it, you know. I, I'm blown away that, you know, this is like the longest press tour in history, you know, for E.T. Like, I've, I've done so many things over the years um, towards the film or, you know, as a, as, uh, as a side effect of its popularity. And it's nice that, you know, Texas remembers that I'm, I'm from here. And <laughs> <laughs> um, but the music is such an important part of the, the, the film. The score is so uh, iconic. And without it, the film would suffer horribly, you know. So it's nice that they're honoring John Williams. And, you know, it's, it's a fun uh, afternoon. I think it's a perfect way to end it. <laughs> right. Henry, it's been a pleasure, and yeah, I can't wait to see you in more dramatic roles. I well, love it. We'll, we'll see. I'm still trying. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Henry. All right, thank you.